Michelle Pfeiffer is here. 25 years ago, she was studying to be a stenographer when she won the Miss Orange County Beauty Contest. Today, she is a three-time Oscar nominee and has starred in such films as Dangerous Liaisons, The Fabulous Baker Boys, and The Age of Innocence. I'm pleased to welcome Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer. Oscar nominee and Golden Globe winner Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer was built to last. Michelle Pfeiffer is considered to be one of the most beautiful actresses in Hollywood. Born in 1958, the California girl originally went to school to be a court reporter. However, she soon realized acting was her true calling. In fact, when I graduated from high school, I went straight into court reporting school to be a stenographer. Really? And, yeah, and I did that for about a year, but it kind of made me crazy. And I think it was just one day I was really frustrated and kind of aimless. And I was 19, and I really asked myself, what is it you want to do? It was if somebody handed you something on a platter and said, here, what would it be? And it was acting. Taking a leap of faith, the young unknown actress dropped out of college to pursue a acting career, first starting out with small bit roles in TV shows. Who is he, Naomi? A bird man, he saved me from them. He has powers beyond belief. Really? I think subconsciously I always wanted to be an actress. Ever, ever since I was a little girl and I used to watch old movies from the 30s and the 40s on, on television. But coming from where I come from, it's very removed from any kind of show business at all. So it was really like a sort of impossibility and a kind of fantasy, you know, there really wasn't much of a reality to it. A few years later, Michelle finally got her big break as she earned the leading role in the movie Grease 2. The film was a flop and ripped apart by critics. But Michelle's performance turned heads and caught the attention of studio executives. I kind of went on the interview as a fluke. I had never been on an audition. Um, like a singing audition. Ever. <laughs> or dance. So went the first day. I just thought I had humiliated myself and walked out. I'm walking across the lot at Paramount Studios and someone comes running after me and says, uh, Pat Birch wants to know the director. Would like for you to come back tomorrow and audition and do the, the dance auditions. I was stunned. Not even a year later, Michelle would go up for the role that many people believe made her famous. And he didn't particularly want me for the part, you know. He didn't? Um, no. Really? But look, my last credit before that was Grease too. Can you blame him? The film was Scarface, and Michelle portrayed the sexy, cocaine-addicted Elvira. Don't call me baby. I'm not your baby. It was a very long and drawn-out auditioning process, yeah. and it went over a period of about, I don't know, it seemed like forever, but I think it was about two or three months. And I was terrified, and yeah. I was really young, and I knew he didn't want me. As it went on, the worse I got, because I just got so afraid. And by the end of it, he said, you know, I'm sorry, but you're just bad now. What's going on? <laughs> You know, and it was just, true, and I was like, I know, I know, I'm just like so up in knots. I'm so, he's like, it's not going to work out, babe, okay, right? So I went away, and then about a month later, they called, and they said, we wanted to screen test you, and I was like, no! So anyway, I show up, and I kind of drag myself, and I have, you know, I'm just no feeling at all that I'm going to, I have any shot in yeah, now exactly. getting this, so. And we do the scene, the restaurant scene at the end, where I oh, yeah. kind of freak out at the end, yeah. and um, I through dishes and everything went flying yes. and I broke things. That's how you cut. do it. I was in it. Yes. And I, there was blood everywhere. What? <laughs> and everyone comes running over to me, checking me out yeah, for yeah. blood. Where am I cut? They're not finding anything. There are no cuts on me. Oh, I look no. over and Al is bleeding. Oh no, oh my God. 
You cut Al Pacino? I cut Al Pacino. Oh my gosh! And that's how I got the part. <laughs> Her flawless, subtle performance was ahead of its time and showed Hollywood she was more than just a pretty face and earned her a role in the film The Witches of Eastwick where she starred alongside Hollywood's finest, Cher, Susan Sarandon, and Jack Nicholson. The film was a game changer for Pfeiffer as it launched her to mega stardom and she didn't quite know how to handle it. It felt like people were more aware of me all of a sudden. And what did that feel like to a young It was a little actress? scary for me. Shortly after, Michelle won the leading role in the movie Married to the Mob and received her first Golden Globe nomination. One year later, she stunned audiences in the period film Dangerous Liaisons and received her first Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress. I think we should end this conversation. I shall leave you in possession of the field. I love you, baby. She would then go on to star as Susie Diamond in The Fabulous Baker Boys. And then Baker Boys came up, and I hadn't had a voice lesson, I hadn't done anything, and I think that part of me thought, oh, it would just come back. And it was really frightening how gone it was, and I had to work really hard for about two months, and then continually through the film to get it into shape. Pfeiffer scored herself a second Oscar nomination, and this time won her the Golden Globe for Best Actress in a Drama. I'd find myself at the end of the night with some creep and tell myself it didn't matter. And you kid yourself that you got this empty place inside where you can put it all. But you do it long enough and all you are is empty. During the production, Pfeiffer was more than hesitant about filming a particular scene. Little did she know, that scene would become one of the most famous scenes in Hollywood history. It was coming up and I went to Steve and I said, Steve. <laughs> You don't really want me to like stand on top of the piano, do you? I mean, <laughs> people are gonna laugh. It's gonna be really silly. And he said, mm, "Yeah, I do." A lot of shoes, a lot of rice. The groom is nervous. He answers twice. It's really killing that he's so willing. Michelle Pfeiffer, fabulous yeah. didn't say anything on it. Oh, uh, I didn't prepare anything. You have the distinction, I think, of speaking what has to be the shortest famous line in motion picture history. It occurs after you've cartwheeled into a scene with Batman mm -hmm. and the Penguin, and it consists of one syllable. Meow. That was it. In 1992, Michelle Pfeiffer took on the indelible character of Catwoman in Batman Returns, forever cementing her place in Hollywood history. I thought it would be um, a couple of scenes and probably, you know, not a fully developed character. Then to my surprise, I read the script and I, I, I found she was just very, um, actually more complicated than I could have even imagined, just sort of, sort of psychologically. And even now people say to me, now, is she a bad guy or is she a good guy? And the reason that is, is because the character always was kind of going from one side to the other. And I think that she was always good at heart, but was always <laughs> running astray. How did you manage that costume? How'd they get you in and out of it? It was an ordeal. Um, it's yeah. some sort of very thin rubber. I felt like I was on this assembly line. We'd go into my trailer, we would powder me down, we would put on the suit, and then I would go and then they would put this silicone goop all over me. How long could you stay in it? I think I wasn't supposed to be in because you get vacuum packed. I don't know what happens, but it it's just sort of starts to squeeze you and Bruce, I would I would love to live with you in your castle. Forever just like in a fairy tale. I just couldn't live with myself. So don't pretend this is a happy ending. If you were forced to share what you think is the role that you are most recognized for. Um, 
Um, what do you think people think is, ah, uh, yeah. Okay, it could be Scarface. Mm -hmm. It could be a uh, uh, Catwoman. Mm -hmm. Could be Susie Diamond from mm -hmm. Baker Boys. Mm -hmm. Michelle gave a stellar performance, and the film was a commercial success and critically acclaimed. She would go on to star in a slew of movies throughout the 90s and early 2000s. During those years, she received four more Golden Globe nominations and one more Oscar nomination for Best Actress in a Leading Role. Now a bona fide actress by 1994, Michelle was not only considered to be one of Hollywood's leading ladies, but was also considered to be one of the most versatile actresses in film. After a short break, Michelle returned to Hollywood in 2007 and co-starred in Hairspray as the villainous Velma Van Tussel, singing once again. The judges, those broads thought they'd win. If I played, they would spin in the dance. <laughs> and you play not a nice lady. Uh, she's no, really, no. she's pretty hateful. She's very hateful, but yeah. she has a sense of humor. It's kind of scary how delicious it is to be evil. Then what you have to be careful of is as you get further and further into shooting, you just get a little carried away, and then they have to kind of wheel you back in. But is that what you kind of like about it, playing against what people assume is your type? I'm grateful that people think it's against my type. It's nice to, you know, surprise yourself to venture into sort of dangerous territory. I, I really, certainly it wasn't within my comfort zone. It was down with a case of In 2012, Michelle reunited with an old friend and starred in Tim Burton's reimagining of Dark Shadows. Angelique, get out of my house. After the family's release in 2013, Michelle took a lengthy hiatus, quietly disappearing from Hollywood unnoticed. Five years later, the woefully underrated actress revealed in Interview Magazine she disappeared for reasons being her children and family life. It was actually my, one of my children who said to me one day, Mom, are you ever going to go back to work? And which kind of hurt my feelings. And <laughs> Earlier in 2017, it looked like the blonde bombshell was planning a comeback. And she certainly did. But this time as a warship. Kicking off her comeback, Pfeiffer portrayed Ruth Madoff in The Wizard of Lies, and her tragic performance was critically acclaimed. He's my lifetime. He's my whole entire memory. And Michelle, you met with Ruth. Can you tell us what that was like? I shared with her that I was reluctant to reach out to her. I just wasn't sure that I wanted to really intrude. She certainly didn't need any more of that. She was a understandably guarded, but incredibly gracious and generous with her time. And I think probably even more curious about me. I think she sort of maybe agreed to meet with me because as she said to me, well, I would think it was very strange if you didn't want to meet me and you were playing me. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And nothing is off limits to these people. Spooky. Have you spoken to the boys? No one speaks to me. What I learned about Ruth Madoff was everybody thought they knew her. Mm -hmm. So it's it's another complexity <clears throat> to playing a real person and must have been <sighs> wonderfully it, challenging. It was really daunting, honestly. And I was offered the part. And it wasn't until after I committed to it that it occurred to me that I was playing a real person and it was the first time that I had ever done that. And somebody who had already been through so much tragedy and I knew was somewhere in the world trying to heal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I knew this was probably the last thing in the world she would want. I, Maybe I it's not called the Ruth Madoff story, yeah, but yeah. I think she's very important in this story. He was her first and only love. And who knows if I'm going to come back. Why would you say that? I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying for no, certain. I said I, that you'd be able to... Forget I mentioned it. You can't do that. I'm not ready. I, I'm, not, I'm not ready to be alone. You're all I have. Why don't you want kids? She followed up with her next movie entitled Mother, 
where she starred alongside Jennifer Lawrence. Critics all over the globe praised Michelle for her brilliant scene-stealing performance, and was even in consideration for an Oscar nomination this year. You know, you're not going to be so young forever. You know, it was really challenging artistically because Darren does these wild, really long masters where he's weaving in and out of rooms and up stairways and down stairways and you're sort of jumping over cables and coming in and, and, and leaving the scene. And it, it, it's wild and yet it was very thrilling. It was exciting and it's a fun part for me. It's, um, I guess, unlike anything I've really ever played or maybe anything I've sort of played in a long time. Finishing out the year strong, Michelle portrayed the secretive widow Caroline Hubbard in the retelling of the famous novel Murder on the Orient Express, where her performance is once again being praised. Eyes linger any longer, I'll have to charge rent. I'll pay. Mm. Yes, Michelle continued to strike gold. However, her triumphant return to the silver screen comes at a time when Hollywood is being examined through the lens of a microscope. A list of actors, directors, and producers have been accused of sexual harassment within the film industry, and Michelle has something to say about it. And I think more shocked by how systemic the issue is, that shocks me more than anything. Is it something you've experienced over your career? I've had situations, yeah, I have. And you know, I don't know, you just didn't talk about it. You just put it away somewhere. Mm -hmm. What's been There's so much shame involved in it, you know, which is interesting. And the other thing that's been really eye-opening for me is that I have yet to speak to a woman who hasn't had an incident. Who hasn't? Who has not. So what yeah. changes from here? I think that it will cease to be normalized and that it will change. I think there's been sort of a normalization that's happened over time, and I think that will stop. Along with being a wife, a mother, and a Hollywood icon, Michelle Pfeiffer is a strong Hollywood activist and was recently rewarded for her work. I am here today to honor and talk to you about the Environmental Working Group, otherwise known as EWG. On top of her career-defining comeback, Michelle managed to stay relevant within pop culture, without her even knowing, as she received name drops in several popular songs, one being Riptide, and Bruno Mars' Uptown Funk. And Michelle's enjoying every second of it. Yeah, it was very cool. It was a little embarrassing at times. You know, I'm in carpool with the kids and the song comes on and my son's like. <laughs> it seems 2017 is Michelle's comeback year. However, Michelle has a different view on that. A lot of people are calling this your comeback year, or that 2017, suddenly you're everywhere. Do you view this as some kind of comeback this year? It's strange because I never really felt like I went away. Call it whatever you want, but the Pfeiffer resurgence is hot and happening. Several publications and critics have applauded Michelle for her return and has labeled 2017 as Michelle's year. Are you telling me the truth? Her gripping performance of Ruth Madoff caught the attention of Hollywood and received her first Emmy nomination and was honored with her seventh Golden Globe nomination. Anybody in the know knows you were not a mastermind. That's nonsense. Thanks. I already want to kill myself. You're trying to make me feel worse? Yes, 2017 was the year of Michelle Pfeiffer, and her comeback has only begun. In 2018, she has a string of movies set to hit the theaters, and Michelle's celebrated return to Hollywood reminds us that her raw talent and glamour ensures that she will never go out of style, and is much like a fine wine who just gets better with age. We are still kicking ass. The queen of the silver screen has finally returned, and was definitely built to last a lifetime. <laughs>